Now, not everything in life happens the way we expect it to. In fact, virtually nothing turns out the way we expect. But that doesn't mean that life can't still be enjoyed. Charlotte Bronte once said that life is so constructed that the event does not, cannot, will not match the expectation. Problem is, when things don't turn out the way we expect, we're often disappointed. When our expectations fail, we can become blind to the good things that are happening right around us. So how do we solve this? Well, first of all, we don't necessarily need to lower our expectations. After all, expecting good things to happen in the world is a sign of healthy self-esteem. And it shows trust for those of us who are Christians that God is with us and that he does care about us. We may need to be, however, a little bit less specific about the things that we do expect so that we can notice the things that are happening around us that we don't necessarily expect. We need to learn how to be more aware of what is actually happening rather than simply looking for what we want to happen. So here are a few tips that might be able to help you. So first, maybe just sit in the stillness of the morning or the evening. Times of quiet and stillness offer great opportunities to practice paying attention. There's fewer distractions and noises to overwhelm us, and that makes it easier to pick out specific things to be thankful for. Now, my tradition has a very long history of morning and evening prayers, times to begin and end our days, giving our attention to God and how we experience Him throughout the day. And just taking some time in quiet, Focusing on God and what is happening right around you at that immediate moment can really help to sharpen your awareness. Now, the second thing is to eat mindfully. Oh, this one is really hard for me. I grew up on a farm and we often had a limited amount of time to eat our food, so I learned to eat pretty quickly. And this happens with my family too. There are times in which it took us like an hour to create the meal and we're done in 10 minutes and everybody wants to go and move on to the next thing. And so I now treat meals simply as fuel rather than an opportunity to enjoy something good, whether that be the food or the company or both. But when I take a moment to simply sit and appreciate what's there, to savor the food and maybe to sip the drink, to really pay attention to what the people around me are saying, the moment becomes almost a holy one. And I can appreciate better the simple gift of food that God has given us. Okay, so now number three. This is a little bit different in some ways, but it's simply spending a little time outdoors. This can be a great way to learn to pay attention. Now, you don't need to go on a far-off retreat, but you do need to focus. Too many of us spend time outside just getting from one place to another, not necessarily aware of what's going on. So maybe take a walk around your neighborhood or even just your yard and notice what you see how the air feels, what you hear and what you smell. There are moments when it's so cold out and I love the sound of my boots tromping in the snow and that squeak that it makes when it's dry snow. I love that sound, but I don't always notice it. Now, these are all pretty simple ways to increase your ability to pay attention. And it is that attention which will help you learn to notice that good things are happening around you even though you might not have been expecting them. So I'd encourage you in the next little bit to pay attention to what is happening and to write down maybe in the comments down below, what did you notice today?